Why do we always want to fix others rather than fixing ourselves? <laughs> you know those Greek uh, tragedies and you know those Greek actors where they would hold up a, a mask in front of their face and there'd be the sad mask and the happy mask and well those Greek actors were called hypocrites. We're going to talk about hypocrites because you know maybe you're one. <laughs> Join me as we continue in Matthew 7 in the Sermon of the Mount. Jesus said, Don't judge, and you will not be judged. For with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or, how will you tell your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and behold, the beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First remove the beam out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the pigs, lest perhaps they trample them under their feet, and turn to tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks it will be opened. Or who is there among you who, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven, give good gifts to those who ask him. Therefore, whatever you desire for men to do to you, you shall also do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So we're continuing through the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is, you know, this is Jesus. And uh, he's talking about judging. He says, don't judge and you won't be judged. And he says, with the measure you use, it will be used back to you. So what exactly is this judging? And um, is it just, you know, uh, I, I've been doing a, like a theology, I've been doing theology study for many, many years, and I'm doing a Master's of Theology right now. And, you know, they always tell us, um, I've only got a couple of subjects to go. They always say in, um, in college, they always say you've, you must critically analyze a text or you know you you read a textbook or you read an essay or a journal article and we get told to critically analyze in other words we're supposed to be kind of a bit judgmental <laughs> we're supposed to look at something and weigh up the pros and the cons you know just like a judge would do in court is jesus saying don't do that i don't think that's what he's saying I know there's been times as a pastor over the years and we've had, I can remember this one instance where someone joined a church, not this one, but a previous one, and they came along with, they were saying bad things, you know, or they believed bad things. They believed, for example, that Jesus wasn't God. They believed he was just the son of God. So they, they believed he was like kind of less important and less powerful. And they were going around the church trying to teach everybody that this that their perspective was correct but it's, it's not the biblical position so what should you do as a pastor should you say oh you know the bible says don't judge you know just just leave it be let the you know you, if i if you did that you would tear the congregation to shreds you know if you just let any old thing happen so you've got to like have a standard you've got to tell people sometimes no you can't do that that's wrong and I had to say to this to this person, I had to say, you can't, you, you can't say that in the church. That's not a Christian position. The position you're teaching isn't Christian. This is a church. And, you know, and then I preached a sermon and it showed the many scriptures that Jesus was God. And uh, I had to correct the situation. But towards the actual individual person, I actually had love. So I had a heart of love toward them toward that person i wasn't judgmental at all i understood that you know i was able to to look at the actions and say those actions are wrong we need to sort that out but toward the person themselves i had a heart full of grace and forgiveness and i think that is what jesus is saying 
to, to put it in my language, David language, I would say don't have a judging attitude or judgmental attitude towards someone like you're no good. You've got it wrong. You know, you should be punished. <laughs> you deserve everything that's coming to you. You know, don't hang around that person. I don't want anything to do with them. Like a negative attitude towards someone. Jesus is saying don't have that attitude towards someone or that's the attitude that God will have to you. And he even says that with the measure you use, it will be measured out to you. In other words, you've got to have an attitude of mercy toward people and kindness. If someone is wrong, you know, like if you're a father and someone wants to date your daughter, you're going to be very thoughtful about whether you want, you know, the, you know, you say to your daughter, I don't think this is the, a good guy. <laughs> or he seems like a nice guy, but, you know, be careful just in case. <laughs> so you, that you're going to have, you're going to be judgmental in one type of a way. In other words, being thoughtful and wise but in another way you're going to be kind and merciful you're going to have um you know you're going to have the right type of heart so i think it's talking about attitudes and so we need to make sure our attitudes are good towards other people so th there's a kind of a heart check you can do so if you um if you think about someone say there's someone you've had some struggles with and you think about them how to know if you've got a good attitude is the feelings you have when you bump into them. So if you're walking through the shops and you bump into them and you're feeling like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> um, maybe you have a heart attitude towards them and you need to let it go and not have a judgmental attitude. But you can like, I meet people all the time where I disagree with them about something, but I still appreciate them as a person. So you have a non-judgmental attitude. It's something to work on. <laughs> so Jesus said, then you see a speck that in someone else's eye, but, you, but you're trying to fix their speck, but you've got a beam in your own eye. We've got this tendency to look at other people and their, their faults and make a big deal. That's such a huge problem. But your own problems, you, you just expect everyone will accept you the way you are. And you just expect, oh, my problems are not that big of a deal. God will just forgive me the way I am. But someone else's problems... Oh, it's a big deal. <laughs> Jesus said, he said, you hypocrite. He said, now, uh, in the, the word hypocritos means an actor. So that's what I mentioned earlier. In Greek plays, they had these tragedies and comedies, and they'd have these different masks. You've seen the white masks, and they'd put the, fa the faces on. A hypocrite in that Greek way of thinking was someone who pretends to be something, but they're not that. Now, sometimes people have said churches are full of hypocrites. Well, that's not, you know, there are hypocrites in church for sure. But, but you might look at someone that says, like, sometimes I'll preach and I will say, this is the right thing a Christian should do. And I will admit that I myself don't always match up to the high expectations that we ought to have. That's not being hypocritical. That's just, that's being honest. The honest facts are that we want to be like Jesus but we haven't made it yet. <laughs> a hypocrite would be saying, Christians ought to be like this, and that's what I do, you know, but they actually not like that. It's putting on a false face and saying you're a certain thing when you're not. And one of the most uh, really attractive things about being honest is that um, unbelievers can relate to it. You know, when a Christian says, you know, I really want to be like Jesus, but I'm, I'm just not, and I'm really trying my best, an unbeliever will look at that and say, well, you know what, I want to be like that too. There's something about the authenticity and the honesty, even if you make mistakes, that's really refreshing and attractive. And, um, but what Jesus is saying is don't pretend you've got your life all sorted out and then try to help others. You can say to others, well, look, I've got my own struggles. I'm happy to help you, but I'm figuring my, my own self out as well. So it's all very practical. And um, for some reason, it, it, it's very, very prevalent for people to want to fix others and not fix themselves. I think the reason is we tend to think that our sins are not that big of a deal because we assume that our own motives are good. So, you know, when you do something and it doesn't work out, you think, well, you know, I meant well. You assume your motives are good, but you assume the other person's motives were not good. But if you were just to feel how they feel it, they'd be thinking, oh... I meant well, but it didn't work out. They're thinking the exact same thing. Everyone intends well, 
but their method of going about it is different. It's even criminals in prison, you know, they said, you know, I never meant to hurt that person. I never meant to kill that person. So even, even though they do sometimes the most despicable things, they often had a reason which they thought was a good reason. It's all very, very strange. And so the point is that we should work on ourselves. <laughs> so, and then Jesus moves on to say that, um, he, he, he moves on to say that if you ask, you will receive, and if you seek, you will find, and if you knock, the door will be opened. It's as simple as that. And um, I remember saying to the Lord when I was 14, saying, Lord, I just, I used to like lay in my bed, you know, going to bed at night and I'd just talk to him. And I, and I remembered saying, Lord, I, I know you love me because the Bible says you do, but I just don't feel that you love me. I just don't feel it. You know, it's, it's kind of real when you feel it. And um, I mean, it's real when you don't feel it, but it becomes real when you feel it. And so I just remembered saying that, Lord, I want to feel your love. I want to know your love. And I, I look back on that prayer that I prayed and I prayed it over many at different times and I think he has answered that prayer I feel the love of God I know he loves me and now I don't I can remember certain moments in my life when I it just felt like I was drowning in God's love there's two moments in particular and this one day at the beach where everything was everything was made of God's love you know the waves were made of god's love the blue sky was made of everything was god's love it was just like all around me it was so much love i forgot to watch my kids <laughs> supposed to be watching them to make sure they're safe i forgot them for a few minutes and um but the love of god was everywhere god was obviously looking after them while that was happening and um the love of god was everywhere and well i've had some experiences and now i walk in just you know the knowledge of the love of god i know how real it is well, I asked, and I received. I didn't receive in the next split second, but I've received. Sometimes I've received in the next split second. Well, the Bible says, ask. What do you need from the Lord? Ask him. And then he says, you know, if you've got children that ask for, say, an egg, would you give them a snake? Oh, no, of course you wouldn't. And he says, well, you are just, you're evil. You know, you're people that are full of sin, and you know how to look after your kids. And he's like, I know how to look after you too. <laughs> and I'm actually good. And uh, I had, um, we went through this patch where we used to boil eggs and you'd have a, a, a carton of eggs in Australia, 12 eggs to a carton. You'd boil them and put them back in the carton. And then the kids could at theory at any time have a boiled egg. And I remember this one day, one of my children asked me for an egg, a boiled egg. Yeah, have an egg, give him an egg. And off he goes and eats it, peels the egg. But then a few days later, he asked for another egg, and it's like just before dinner time. And I'd say, no, you're having dinner soon. So the answer was no. Now, why did I say no to him asking for an egg the second time? It's because I had something else that was good for him, and I didn't want it to be spoiled. So sometimes God will say no, but it's because he has something better for you in plan, and he doesn't want to mess it up. <laughs> so that's how good our God is. Sometimes the answer is a delayed one, or sometimes it's just a different answer because it's something better is going to happen, but he knows how to give good gifts. That's the type of God we have. And so this chapter is really all about faith. Well, this, at least this part of this chapter is all about faith, knowing that God will bless you, but at the same time, you have to have a good attitude towards others because that attitude towards others depends or, or determines or affects the way that God will treat you. And so do unto others as you would have them do to you. In other words, if you want God to be kind to you and to bless you and to answer your prayers, have this kind and, and caring and giving attitude towards others too. Father, thank you for the Sermon on the Mount. Thank you for such clear instruction on how to live Lord, help us to live in a way that pleases you, I pray. And Lord, show us the love of God. Like I prayed when I was 14, show all my listeners the love of God. Amen.